So today I thought it would be extremely helpful to go over the different silhouettes for bridal gowns. Because it can be a little hard to explain verbally, I thought I would draw them out just so you can get an idea. It should definitely be noted that I am no Pictionary champion, so I'm going to do my best, but no promises. First, let's go over some vocab, just so you know the terminology I'm going to be using for this video. The top portion of the gown is called the bodice, and it's normally whatever is tight-fitting on the body. The skirt is the lower portion, and that's what's going to contain the layers of tulle or crinoline. Most of the time, brides like to call this poof. Just for your convenience, I colored the skirt in red and the bodice in purple, just in case you were a little confused. First off, we're going to start with a ball gown, just because it's the typical dress people think of when they think of bridal gowns. A ball gown has layers of tulle and crinoline underneath, and that's what gives it its shape. Because of all the layers of tulle, ball gowns can hide the hips, which make it a perfect gown for women that want to conceal those on their wedding day. The bodice is fitted through the bust and waist, and the skirt will start at the natural waist or a little bit lower. Sometimes petite brides can look a little overwhelmed in this gown as it can overpower a small frame with so much volume. Next up is the A-line gown. This is a great choice and is popular among brides because it's flattering on almost every body type. Not a lot of brides know of its existence, so they don't ask for it specifically though. The bodice is like a ball gown where it's fitted at the top, but instead of having a ton of volume in the skirt, it just kind of gracefully falls away from the body, and it actually makes a capital A shape in the skirt, so that's where it gets its name from. A-line gowns are perfect for straddling the line between formal, but still being not too fussy, and with beading and rhinestones or just leaving it plain, A-line gowns can really fit into whatever feeling you're trying to emulate on your wedding day. Now that you know kind of the traditional styles for a ball gown and A-line, I'm going to show you a drop waist ball gown and a modified A-line. So these are just different waistlines on these two types of silhouettes. A drop waist is when the bodice of the gown goes past the natural waistline onto the hips. Usually the skirt will start at the very top of your leg and bottom of the hip or maybe just a tiny bit higher depending on your height. A drop waist ball gown still has all the volume of a ball gown just with more curve on top. A modified A-line is similar to this concept as the bodice is slightly lower, but instead of having the drama of a full skirt, the A-line skirt just kind of elegantly flows away from the body instead. So as you can see on the left, that is the drop waist ball gown. There's the added drama of a full skirt, but on the right, which is the modified A-line, it's just a little more subtle. Drop waist and modified A-lines are perfect for brides who want to show off their curves and it can also make the torso appear longer. Moving on from the drop waist, we're going to go a little lower with the bodice to a trumpet style. This is also sometimes called a fit and flare, but generally speaking, they're the same thing. Don't confuse a trumpet with a mermaid, however, because they are slightly different and I'll get into that in a minute. The bodice of the trumpet is going to hug the body from the bust all the way to about mid-thigh depending on your height. From there, the skirt will begin with volume. Brides love the style gown because it shows off all their curves and is still more comfortable than a traditional mermaid. Mermaid gowns are one of the most common gowns that brides bring up. I think it's because it's easy to understand what it looks like just from the name and it's a lot easier to remember. Like the trumpet, the bodice is tightly fitted throughout the body, but where the trumpet style usually flares out around mid-thigh, a mermaid will flare out either at or below the knee. Because the knees are confined in a mermaid gown to get the full shape, a trumpet is easier to move the legs and knees around in. Thus, more brides end up opting for a trumpet instead of for a mermaid. Also, another thing to keep in mind is if you're having a religious ceremony and will be kneeling, go with a trumpet. It's going to be extremely hard to stand up after kneeling down in a mermaid gown. So just to shake things up a bit, I'm actually going to add a sleeve onto this next one. This is a sheath gown. This silhouette is very slim and it's kind of close to a column dress. It usually consists of very few layers, making it ideal for destinations or backyard weddings. This style looks great on thin and tall women, but it can also look good on a more petite body type as well. This is because there isn't a lot of fabric to distract away from the bride. Now, just because I added sleeves to my drawing doesn't mean all sheath dress have sleeves. There are some strapless ones as well. 
Lastly, we are going to be talking about another type of waist silhouette, the empire waist. On this silhouette, the bodice is very tiny, covering only the bust and some of the rib cage. Normally, the skirt starts right below the bust line and flows freely all the way down. This can look great on smaller brides because it elongates the body. However, if you want to hide the largest part of you, such as your hips, this gown can be a little unforgiving. A lot of bridesmaids dresses are actually empire waist as well. I hope you ladies found this video helpful. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you did. Also, you can always follow me on Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram for more bridal tips or to ask any questions you possibly have. As always, I have a new video every Tuesday, so make sure to stop by next week. I'm actually going to be doing a video about how to make your maid of honor stand out. So make sure to definitely check that out next week, and I will see you all then.